Well, in this lecture, we will discuss the capsid structure and the symmetries of the capsid structure of viruses. Viruses have a capsid which is a protein coat and which encloses the viral genome. With the enclosed nucleic acid, the capsid is called a nucleocapsid. The capsid has mainly three functions. First, it protects the viral genome from physical, chemical as well as enzymatic damage. It determines if a cell is suitable for infection and it contains proteins that help the virion to penetrate the host cell membrane and also to inject the infectious nucleic acid into the host cell cytoplasm. This capsid is composed of subunits called capsomeres. The capsomeres are said to be made of monomers which again can be made of one single polypeptide or a few polypeptides. For example, TMV capsid contains only one type of monomer made of only a single polypeptide of 158 amino acids. This strategy is to take maximum advantage of the information stored in the small genetic material. Also, the capsid is formed all by itself by a process called self-assembly. So, there is no need of any enzyme-catalyzed reaction for capsid assembly. The viruses have to face a serious problem as far as the capsid design is concerned. This is because the capsid has to be large enough to enclose the nucleic acid but at the same time the viral genome can code for only a small number of coat proteins. In 1956, James Watson and Francis Crick proposed principles of virus structure which were later universally accepted. According to them, the only way in which the viral capsid can be encoded by the small viral genome is by use of identical subunits. The subunits must also be packed in such a way so as to provide each subunit with the same environment in the capsid. On the basis of these principles, three types of symmetrical structures are known. Cubic or icosahedral symmetry, helical symmetry and complex or vinyl symmetry. Let us first discuss icosahedral symmetry. A body with cubic symmetry has a number of axes about which when rotated it gives identical appearances. The icosahedral symmetry is the most preferred symmetry in viruses. This is because it is the minimum free energy structure with a larger number of subunits. For a regular tetrahedron, the number of subunits is 12 and for an octahedron, it is 24. Triangulating a dome into 20 is the best way of producing a capsid with 60 equivalently bonded identical structures. A regular icosahedron has 20 faces, each an equilateral triangle, 12 vertices and 30 edges. An icosahedron is said to have a 5 is to 3 is to 2 symmetry. This is because at the vertices it shows a 5 fold symmetry, at each face a three-fold symmetry and at each edge a two-fold symmetry as can be seen on your screen. The simplest icosahedron can be built by 60 subunits. Each triangular face is made of three subunits and there are 20 such faces, hence a total of 60 subunits. 
These 60 subunits are so arranged that they fit together with no significant gaps in between them to form a hollow shell which can contain about 3 kb of single-stranded DNA or single-stranded RNA. For example, 5x174 capsid has 60 subunits as can be seen in the picture on your screen. This structure can be regarded as being made of 12 pentamers. But the construction of a protein capsid on the basis of such a simple icosahedral design restricts the size of the genome that can be packaged. In fact, only a few viruses are able to fit their genetic material in a 60 subunit capsid. Most viruses require more space inside the capsid structure than is afforded by a 60 subunit icosahedron and hence a slight modification of the structure is necessary. Their capsids are made up of more than 60 subunits. In 1962, Donald Casper and Aaron Klug developed a theoretical framework accounting for the structural properties of larger particles with icosahedral symmetry. Casper and Klug proposed that when a capsid contains more than 60 subunits, each subunit occupies a quasi-equivalent position that is, the bonding properties of subunits in different structural environments are similar but not identical as in the case of the simple 60 subunit structure. According to the theory, icosahedral capsids are made not just of pentamers but also of hexamers. Both are together called capsomeres. Pentamers made of 5 subunits have a convex shape and are present at the 12 vertices which can be seen as red in the figure on your screen. The hexamers made of 6 subunits are flat and are present elsewhere at the faces and edges. According to Casper and Klug, the protein subunits might have the conformational flexibility or may function as molecular switches so as to allow the subunits to adapt to quasi-equivalent environments and viruses with more than 60 subunits might exhibit this sort of near equivalence. This sort of packing was called quasi-equivalent packing by them. Let us take the example of a larger virus like that of turnip yellow mosaic virus with 180 identical subunits that is 60 subunits are arranged as pentamers at the 12 vertices in a 5-fold symmetry. The remaining subunits that is 120 are arranged as hexamers with a 6-fold symmetry and are interposed between the pentamers. Thus, there are 32 capsomeres out of which 12 are pentamers and 20 are hexamers. Let us now discuss the complex icosahedral capsids. A number of icosahedral shells have structures in which the individual subunits are not in the roughly equivalent position with respect to their neighbors. Let us take adenovirus capsid as our example. Adenoviruses exhibit a combination of non-equivalent and quasi-equivalent interactions. The most striking features of the adenovirus capsids are the well-defined icosahedral capsid and presence of long projections the fibers at the 12 vertices as can be seen in the figure. There are 240 hexamers and 12 pentamers. The fibers, pentamers and hexamers are all constructed from different proteins which are to be arranged in a regular fashion while following the rules of symmetry. 
The pentamers are arranged at the vertices and from each penton arises a fiber and the hexamers are arranged at the faces. The 240 hexamers are made of identical subunits and each functions as two repeating subunits. Thus there are 1440 hexon subunits. The 12 pentamers comprise 60 subunits. Thus 1440 hexon subunits and 60 penton subunits together make up a total to 1500 subunits. Within a phase, hexons make equivalent interactions with each other, but interactions are different at the edges. Additional proteins are required to cement the hexons and anchor the pentons. Let us now move on to the next type of symmetry that is helical symmetry. The nucleocapsids of some enveloped animal viruses as well as Certain plant viruses and bacteriophages are rod-shaped or filamentous with helical symmetry. The simplest way to arrange multiple identical subunits is by use of rotational symmetry where these subunits are stacked one upon another around an axis much like a spiral staircase. The subunits curve into a helix as they are thicker at one end than the other. This forms a hollow tube within which the nucleic acid can be housed. This symmetry gives rise to rod-shaped viral particles which may be short and rigid or long and flexible. Helical symmetry it is described by the formula P is equal to mu into rho which can be seen on your screen where P is the pitch of the helix, mu is the number of structural subunits per helical turn or and rho is the axial rise per subunit. The characteristic feature of helical symmetry is that any length of the genome can be enclosed simply by varying the length of the helix. Such a structure is therefore called an open structure in contrast to the icosahedral symmetry which are closed structure with a definite internal space. The commonest example of helical symmetry is tobacco mosaic virus. It is a plant virus with a single-stranded RNA genome of 6,390 nucleotides. The virus is rod-shaped with a length of 300 nanometers and a diameter around 15 to 18 nanometers. The protein coat is made up of 2,130 identical subunits which are arranged helically as you can see in the picture on your screen. Each subunit is made up of a single polypeptide chain with a molecular weight of 17,500 Daltons. The polypeptide is made of 158 amino acid residues and is one of the first proteins whose sequence was determined. The overall structure of TMB is a hollow tube with the genomic RNA attached to the internal face of the tube Three nucleotides held in the cleft of each capsid subunit. The helix is a right-handed helix with 130 turns and around 16.3 subunits per helical turn. The pitch or rise per turn of the helix is 2.28 nanometers and the axial rise per subunit is 0.14 nanometers. Each subunit engages in the same interactions with its neighbors and each binds to three nucleotides in the RNA. Another example of helical symmetry is vesicular stomatitis virus, an enveloped rhabdovirus. It is approximately 180 nanometers long 
and 75 nanometers wide. The nucleocapsid has a bullet-shaped morphology which is a characteristic feature of rhabdoviruses consisting of 35 helical turns of the ribonucleoprotein complex. Closely associated with the N protein is the viral matrix protein which bridges the membrane and the nucleocapsid. This close association between the nucleocapsid and the membrane results in a very uniform bullet shaped structure for these viral particles. The next type of symmetry is complex symmetry also called binal symmetry. Some viruses are such that they do not fit into either of the symmetrical structures that we have studied till now. They are said to have complex symmetries or rather binal symmetry because they exhibit both the icosahedral and helical symmetries in their structures. Such binal symmetry is mainly shown by bacteriophages. Let us consider T4 bacteriophage and lambda phage as our examples. T4 bacteriophage is a phage that infects E. coli. It is one of the largest known phages approximately 90 nanometers wide and 200 nanometers long. It has an icosahedral head and a helical tail. Hence, it is called binal symmetry. The figure on your screen shows the structure of a T4 bacteriophage. The capsid head is 95 nanometers long and 65 nanometers in diameter and is prolate shaped. It is made up of 2000 identical subunits and is packed with circular double stranded DNA which is 500 micrometers long. The icosahedral head is an elongated prolate head with 132 capsomeres of which 12 would be pentamers and the remaining 120 would be hexamers. The tail shows helical symmetry. It consists of a hollow core tube through which the nucleic acid passes during infection. It is surrounded by a protein tail sheath. The sheath is made of 144 subunits arranged in 24 rings of 6 subunits each. The sheath is connected to the head by a collar. At the other end of the tail is a hexagonal base plate. At each corner of the base plate is a tail pin and tail fibers. Each tail fiber is made up of two parts, proximal and distal and is 130 nanometers long. The tail fibers are normally folded around the tail in such a way that their midpoints are attached to viscous. The tail fibers are responsible for the attachment of the phage to the host cell during infection. Let us move on to the other example of binal symmetry that is lambda phage. Lambda phage is again a bacteriophage of E. coli. It has an icosahedral head with a diameter of 55 nanometers. The capsid is made up of around 600 subunits. The tail is helical and is 180 nanometers long and made up of 35 rings. It is connected to the head by a head tail connector the collar. The tail ends in a terminal tail fiber which is 25 nanometers long. It helps in recognizing the E. coli lamb protein receptor during infection. Let us now discuss viral envelopes. Many animal viruses possess structural elements 
in addition to the capsids they are bound by an outer membrane called the envelope influenza virus with helical symmetry and herpes virus with icosahedral symmetry are examples of enveloped viruses enveloped viruses are less common in plant viruses and are extremely rare among bacteriophages on the basis of the presence or absence of envelope the viruses are classified as enveloped or naked viruses these viruses multiply in the host cell cytoplasm and are released by budding through the plasma membrane as you can see in this picture on your screen <coughs> while doing so they hijack a part of the host cell plasma membrane and get covered by it this membrane now serves as its envelope other membranes that may contribute to viral envelopes include the nuclear envelope the golgi apparatus envelope and the endoplasmic reticulum envelope the envelope being host derived is biologically a phospholipid bilayer since the membrane exhibits flexibility the enveloped viruses are also called pleomorphic the envelope imparts a few advantages to the viruses firstly it protects the virus from enzymes and chemicals secondly it helps the virus to enter inside the host cell let us now discuss about the viral envelope constituents all viral envelopes are lipid membranes which they acquire from the host cell hence they are typically phospholipid bilayers however the lipid composition of these bilayers is different because different viruses acquire their envelopes from different cell membranes the envelope might protect the virus but on the other hand it also prevents the recognition of receptor molecules on the host cell hence it modifies its lipid envelope by synthesizing certain proteins which are associated with the envelope these proteins are mainly glycoproteins some glycoproteins are external glycoproteins these are the proteins whose major portion protrudes outside the envelope and a small portion forms the transmembrane protein these protruding parts are also called as spikes or peplomers these are antigenic in nature rhabdoviruses paramyxoviruses influenza viruses are some enveloped viruses which have glycoprotein spikes many of the proteins are present as multimers let us take the example of influenza virus to understand this concept the particles are 80 to 120 nanometers in diameter the virions are covered by a host derived lipid bilayer envelope the envelope of influenza virus contains two glycoprotein species a heme agglutinin present as trimers and a neuraminidase as tetramers there are two matrix proteins m1 and m2 the inner surface of the envelope is lined by a layer of the viral matrix protein m1 which is a peripheral membrane protein it is the most abundant virion protein m2 protein is homo tetrameric integral membrane glycoprotein which projects through the viral envelope to form an ion channel 